What is up guys, it is ToolGuyY here and today I'll be showing you how to replace a brake actuator on a 2012 Lexus CT200H. These are some of the tools that are required for you to have to fully complete this job. So please take some time and pause to read this thoroughly before starting your repair. Also, there's a certain skill level required. If you guys aren't comfortable doing brakes or brake bleeding procedure or just using a scanner, I don't recommend attempting this repair. Start the repair by plugging your scanner into the OBD2 port located underneath the driver kick panel. In this video, I will be using the Snap-on Solus. Once in your scanner, scroll down to anti-locking brakes, then functional test, then zero down test. The zero down test lowers the brake fluid pressure in the accumulator before we start the repair. Once that's done, go ahead and remove the negative cable from your battery and pull out the service plug. To keep this video as short as possible, I did decide to make a separate battery and service plug video so please check that out, link in the description below. After removing the service plug, always remember to let the car sit for at least an hour so that the hybrid battery can discharge and you won't get shocked. Once that hour is up, we can start the repair by removing the wiper arms. Start by prying the two covers off of the wiper arms. Underneath the cover, there will be two nuts that hold down the wiper arms to the wiper linkage. Use a 14 millimeter socket to remove those nuts, then remove the wiper arms, put it on the side so it's out of your way. Remove the window cowl by pushing the tabs at the bottom forward while pulling or prying up. Take your time, be careful not to break any tabs, and work your way from one side to the other. Once everything's disconnected, go ahead and remove it and put it to the side so it's out of your way. Be careful not to break the wire harness going to the window. Remove the three clips holding that wire harness down to the bottom metal part of the window cowl. Then disconnect the connector. This step is optional, but in order to protect that wire harness a little more, I decided to tape it to the window so it won't get snagged on anything. Next, remove the three tabs holding down the harness going to the wiper motor. Using a 10mm socket, remove the two bolts holding down the wiper linkage and motor. Carefully free up both ends of the wiper linkage, slide to the left, and pull out. Once you have the wiper linkage out, turn it over and remove three more tabs holding down the wire harness going to the wiper motor. Then unplug and put to the side. Next, using your 10mm socket, remove a ton of 10mm bolts holding down the wiper linkage tray. As I recalled, there was 12 of them. Remove the two plastic separators with your trim panel tool before removing the tray. Once everything's freed up, remove the tray carefully by lifting up and pulling out toward you making sure nothing else is caught on it. Next, remove the tab holding the connector down to the support bar. Then remove two 14mm nuts holding down the bar to the strut mount. Do this on both driver and passenger side. Using a pair of pliers, remove the clamps on the brake hoses that go from the brake fluid reservoir to the side of the brake actuator. Using some hose pliers, remove the hose from the brake actuator. In this video, I'm using old spark plugs to plug those hoses to save as much brake fluid as we can. Make your way to the other side of the reservoir and remove one more hose and plug it. Remove two 10mm nuts holding down the brake fluid reservoir to the support bar. Unplug the brake fluid level sensor and remove it with the brake fluid reservoir. Once everything's off the support bar, remove it by lifting up and putting to the side. Next, remove the one 10mm bolt that holds the bracket for the red line to the brake actuator. Next, remove the brake actuator connector by pulling out the gray tab, then sliding to the left and putting to the side. After that's done, we could finally start removing all the lines to the brake actuator. Remove five lines using a 10mm wrench, one at the top left corner and four in the front. In this video, I broke all the lines loose with a 10mm line wrench first. Using a line wrench first reduces the risk of stripping those tight lines. Also in this video, I painted each line a different color of nail polish, then took a picture to prevent line swapping when reinstalling. Next, make your way inside the car and remove the two 8mm fasteners holding the bottom kick panel up. And unclip it by pulling down. Once you have it down, you'll see three connectors. Unclip them, disconnect them, and put that to the side. Next, locate where the brake actuator meets the brake pedal and release the spring off the rod. Then remove the retaining clip. You may need to use a screwdriver. Then pull the rod out. Once the brake actuator is completely freed up from the pedal, you can start removing the four 12mm nuts holding the brake actuator to the firewall. In this video, I used a 12mm deep socket with a 3 inch swivel and a 6 inch extension to make it easier. Also, if you guys are interested in the light, it's the Maxion Cyclops, link in the description below. Once those four nuts are off, make your way to the engine bay and pull out the brake actuator. 
When pulling out, make sure that you keep in mind not to snag anything like brake lines or any harnesses while pulling it out. If your new brake actuator doesn't come with a new gasket, don't forget to swap over the old one to the new one. Congratulations guys, you now know how to remove a brake actuator on a 2012 CT200H. To reinstall, just install in reverse order. But don't leave just yet, I still have to go over bleeding procedures. To correctly perform the brake bleeding procedure, reinstall everything up to the brake fluid reservoir. The reasoning behind this is that we still need to gain access to the brake actuator to bleed the stroke simulator. Jack your car up so that all four wheels are off the ground and remove four wheels using your 21mm socket. Once off, put your wheels to the side so it's out of your way. Make your way to the back of the car and reinstall your service plug correctly. Push it in, slide to the left, and then slide to the right. It's very important that you make sure you slide it to the right because if you don't, it will throw a hybrid battery open code. Once that service plug is installed, reinstall your negative battery cable to the battery and tighten it down with your 10 millimeter socket. In this next part, you're gonna need two people to bleed the brakes, one on the scanner and one at the caliper. So grab a friend and let's get started. Connect your scanner, read the VIN, and make your way to where all the control modules are listed. Scroll down to anti-locking brakes, then air bleeding, then ABS actuator removed. From there, follow the step-by-step -step instructions provided by your scanner. To bleed the calipers, you'll need an 8mm and a 10mm wrench. Following the instructions provided by your scanner, it'll have you bleed the passenger rear wheel, then the driver rear, then driver front, then passenger front. Keep in mind between every wheel, you should be checking your fluid and topping off as needed. After all four corners are bled, the scanner will have you bleed the stroke simulator. After the scanner will have you re-bleed the driver front wheel, then the passenger front, Keep in mind, as more brake fluid pressure builds up in the actuator, more brake fluid is going to be coming out. So don't forget to keep topping off your brake fluid. In this next part, the scanner is going to activate the ABS actuator five times. I recommend putting a towel around the brake fluid reservoir to help with the cleanup process due to overflowing. And then the bleeding procedure is done. Clear all your codes and you're good to go. I recommend cleaning everything near and around the brake fluid reservoir with a can of brake clean so we don't mistake it as a leak. I also recommend cleaning off all wheel well liners before slapping on your wheels. Reinstall all four wheels and torque them down. To finish off the job, all you guys have to do is reinstall the window cowl, reinstall the wiper blades, and put the trunk covers back in. If you guys liked or found this video informative, please smash that like button and subscribe to my channel for more how-to and tour review videos. Also check me out on Instagram at toolguyy where I post daily. Thank you guys again for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day.